Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. As part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions, and today's question comes from Tim, and Tim just wants to review this hand played in a tournament. So let's check it out. Okay, so in this hand we have Jack-9 suited, there's a $40 ante, the blinds are 15300 and in this exact situation there's a raise from Diogen, it folds around, and Tim decides to rip it. And Tim says, the villain had just joined the table and I had no HUD stats whatsoever. He was completely unknown to me. So unfortunately I wasn't given any other information, I don't know where we are in terms of payouts, I don't know any of that kind of important MTT information. So just for the record, for you MTT players that send in hands, when you do, please make sure you include all the important details, otherwise it makes this very, very difficult to analyze and give correct analysis from it. But that being said, I still want to show you how to proof this hand mathematically, and that's what we're going to talk about today, that's the big teachable moment here. So to do this, we're going to use a custom spreadsheet that I created, there's a download link for this in the description box if you're interested in picking it up. Essentially we throw in some information, we get the EV, and then down below I created this little custom graph which shows us what our current EV looks like but also what things look like in a better case scenario and a slightly worse case scenario. And for me I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff so I appreciate having all the extra information at my fingertips. So to figure out the EV of our show we just need to start filling in some simple information. So let's start from the top. Pot size before we shove, what was that? That was 1560. Okay, 1560. How much do we have to call? Well, at this point, that's another 450. Perfect. How much are we shoving for? 7508, because our opponent covers us. Excellent. Equity when shove or equity when called. Well, we have to figure that one out. Okay, so stretch this out so you can actually see a number. Excellent. Okay, so the last thing we need is our equity one called, and let's plug that into Equilab. So we have Jack-9 suited. Let's think about the kind of hands our opponent would open raise from there and then call our shove with. So let's just say 10s plus ace-king. Okay, maybe agree with that, maybe disagree with that. We're just going to use this for the time being, and that's 28. Perfect, and there we go. So we notice that in this situation, if villain never ever folds, and this is where we are, that we are making a horrifically terrible shove, and this would be really, really bad. Now, if that's the case, what this is essentially saying is we're making the assumption, if he's never folding, of course, that this is the only stuff he opened, right? This is his open raising range from, where do you open? Early, middle-ish? So if that's the case, and that's his only range from there, obviously this shove is terrible, but chances are he opens probably wider than just 3.5% of hands, right? I think that's probably pretty reasonable. So if you thought that he were opening something like, say, deuces plus ace-queen plus, which is, you know, 8.5%, which means he's folding a decent chunk of the time, then we're in a situation where this could look a little bit better. So let's say instead he's actually folding half the time. We'll start with that first. Okay, that's not too, too bad, but still negative. Better than what it was. If he's folding a ton of the time, we're making some profit, but not very much, right? So this is not a ton of profit considering the risk, right? We are shoving a lot of money to win eh, that, and we're making the assumption that he's folding a huge chunk of the time. So given that, this does not look like a good shove unless you have a dead-on read that this dude is going to fold a ton of the time. I'd say this is probably not the best shove in the world and you probably could have waited for a better spot. So unless you have some really crucial information, chances are I don't love this shove all that much. So now you know how to solve for this situation. Again, it's not too, too complicated. If you're interested in using this spreadsheet for solving these kind of things on your own, definitely download that. But otherwise, just understanding how this is solved, where the EV is coming from, and the really crucial point is understanding how often you need your opponent to fold. Of course, in this situation, if you expect him to fold a ton of the time, so he opens really wide and then continues very tightly, okay, this could be okay, but overall, I think this is going to be not the greatest shove in the entire world. I just think that it's a little optimistic and there's not a lot of buffer considering how many big blinds you're ripping into this pot. And unfortunately we do end up getting called by aces, end up losing the pot, it is what it is, but at the end of the day the most important thing is that we know how to solve for it. So Tim, thank you very much for the hand and if you or anyone else has a poker related hand or question, feel free to send it to me directly at splitsuit.com send. That will send you directly to my personal hand drop box and you can leave me any hand or question that you have right there. Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.